Welcome back everyone, how are you guys doing? Today we will continue working on our combat, fixing some from the last episode and also adding some tower range visuals. But before we start, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe if you like this type of content. Alright, now let's get into the episode. But first, we should address a few things from the previous episode. First, let's take a look at our tower. In our tower constructor, we have the set default damage range and so on. And for our enemies, we have a method here in our master class that sets the start health. Then we call it from each and every enemy, which isn't the smartest thing to do. Why don't we just call it right here? Set start health in our constructor. And we can change this to private. Like so. And then we go to our enemies and just remove that. This way we still get the health, but we don't need to call it in every constructor. So that was the first fix. And the second fix will be to add some sort of health bar above the enemies. And I'm just thinking something simple, such as a red line above their heads. And if they're losing health, the bar gets smaller and smaller and smaller until they don't have any health left and then they die. And one way of doing this is to have two values, current health and max health. In the beginning, both the start health and the max health will be equal. And if you use that in a division where we have max health at the bottom and the current health at the top. And if the current health loses value, then the result changes and gets smaller and smaller. In the beginning, when they're equal, it's 1, and if the current health goes to 0, then the result is 0. And we will use this, which will be a float value, as a calculation to how big the bar should be. The lesser the health, the smaller the bar gets. So let's add one more variable before we actually get into the coding for it. So we have the health, but we also add a private int max health and max health will be equal to health in the beginning the first time we call it and in here we will also add a method public float get health bar float which will return health divided by max health and I think we need to cast one of them into a float to make sure that the division here becomes a float as well. So I'm just doing that to make sure that they are returning a float and not just an integer casted into a float. All right, next up will be to go to our enemy manager. And in here for our render, we will add brackets here because we'll add another method and we will call this method draw health bar enemy and graphics we need to pass in create the method save let's begin with something very very simple so just set a new color g dot set color color dot red and we could draw line but a line is only one pixel in width or you know in the size of the line and it uses position 1 to position 2 but we are actually going to use a fill rect this way we can also change the size of it quite easily by just changing the height and let's start with 3 in height uh, width, we will keep it at 32 for for beginning. And the X and Y, let's uh, just use enemy.getx, enemy.gety. And I think we need to cast these into integers because they are float values. Like so. And if we start the game now, we should have some health bars and we do. The width of them is just as wide as the enemies themselves. And let's try to see if we can shrink that a little bit. If you want to keep it this size, that's totally fine. Maybe you want them to be even further above the enemies. 
which I think is a good idea. Let's uh, start with that. Let's put the health bars slightly above the enemies and not exactly on top. And we do that by going in here for Y. So let's draw it minus say 10 pixels and see how that looks. So now they are hovering a bit above the enemies. And I actually think that's uh, a bit better, but let's uh, shrink the width of it. So instead of 32, let's use something else, but make it divisible by two. So let's put 20 here, but actually let's uh, replace this value with a HP bar width. And let's go up here and put a private int health bar width equals 20. But to get it to be in the center, we first plus 16, which is half of the sprite width. And then we take minus, and add some brackets, bar width divided by two. This way, make sure that the bar is in the center above the enemy. And that looks to be in the center. So I think this is a bit, a bit better. And to make sure that the bar shrinks when the enemy is taking damage, we add first a method here, private, private int, get new bar width. And this one will take a enemy, e. And this method will return the new width. So we take the hp bar width, which is the default one, times um, enemy dot get health bar float which is now going to be the new bar but we just need to return it as well and we need to cast this into an integer so when the health shrinks the bar shrinks so then we need to copy this one the method and replace them with the bar here in our calculation as well as that one and now it should work perfectly so if the health is 50 percent or half then the bar will be half and we make sure that it's centered like so and the width is the new width yeah all right so let's run it and see if there is any difference there shouldn't be just as big as before let's go to our orc and set health to 50, like so, and ah, we need to change these values to protected, copy, and if you run it now, the health bar of the orc should be half of the everyone else. So let's see if he comes up, and yeah, that's about half the size of the healthy ones. So it's working. Perfect. One thing we should probably add as a visual is when we have a tower and we select it, we would like to see the attack range of it. So let's add some sort of eclipse or circle around the tower that we selected that shows how far this tower can shoot or rather can see enemies. And uh, we start in our action bar for our draw display tower. And here we simply make a new method, draw displayed tower range G and then we create that method and in here we want to set a color for the circle so G dot set color say color dot white it's gonna stand out easy so we're starting with white and then we can change the color if you want to and to get the circle we type G dot draw oval and the values here are the X and Y is the position in the top left corner as if it would have been a square. And the width is the width of the circle as well as height is the height. So we can make a very stretched out oval or we can make a perfect circle. But we're going to make a perfect circle. So for X and Y we want to get the display tower get X, display tower dot get Y and width. We're just going to start with 100 and 100, just to see where we're at, and uh, then we will work our way from there. So if we start the game, 
place a tower, click on it, and as you can see, this is how the circle is being drawn. So this is all wrong, we want to move it so the circle is in the center of the tower, or rather the center of the circle is in the center of the tower. So first we're going to fix the x position, which is half of its uh, width to the left. So minus 50 and as well the same for our height. So it should look better, but we still need to do one more thing. And that's to take into account that we want it in the middle of the tower and not using the tower's top left corner as the center. So then we need to take into account the size of the actual tower, which is 32. So we need to plus 16, which is half of 32, plus 16. And we'll make a method to get the correct values here. And right now we are just typing 100, but we should get the actual range for the tower from a method. So let's try this again and place the tower. And that looks much better. Actually, we can do this without adding a new method. But first we're gonna remove the 50 plus 16 is so that we get in the center of the tower and then we minus display tower dot get range. And I think this is a float. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a float. So we need to cast that over to an int. And for y, remove that, plus 16, minus, cast to int, display tower, get range. And let's just press enter there so we can see it. And we're going to copy this one and paste it here as well as here, like so. Now let's take a look and see how it looks. Let's place a tower, click on the tower, and it's completely wrong because I forgot to divide by two for the position start, as well as here, like so. Save, run it, and that should look a lot better now, right? And now the tower has a range indicator, and just by looking at this, uh, it's the, safe to say that the range needs to be increased quite a bit for it to be useful. So that's something we're going to work on later. But right now we got the range indicator working, so that's great. And that is all for this episode. In the next one, we will start working with the projectiles and making sure the enemies can be damaged and also killed. It will take some time to explain it, so I'm putting it in the next episode instead. But I hope you enjoyed this update, and if you have, please leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next update. But until then, take care, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.